Well, first I'll just say thanks, FedEx, for leaving this um, right out in the middle of the rain. Uh, but but that's okay because um, the inside is mostly dry. A little bit wet on the outside packaging. Everything on the inside seems to be okay. So we're still in good shape. Alrighty, it did come packed pretty well. So it did not get wet even though the box was soaked. It was also wrapped in uh, just regular paper and the bubble wrap here. So I was, I was checking to make sure and around everything. Um, yeah, no water got in or around it or whatever. The, the bubble wrap was a little bit wet, but I didn't have to wor worry so much about uh, anything inside getting wet. It was packed pretty well. There's only a few places the water could have gotten in and it was pulled up in other spots. So uh, yeah, I'm reasonably sure, pretty sure, the no water got in. If so, I'm going to blame it on FedEx. But anyway, yeah, came with a power cord. We're good to go. We're going to start checking it out. So I kind of did a thing. Yep, this is a Z440. Uh, was a workstation at one time. HP Z440. That's got a Xeon processor in it, 6-core, 12-thread, I believe it is, 16-gig of memory, um, and did not, come with, uh, did not come with storage, but pretty much came with everything else, including a 700-watt power supply. So let's talk about it and kind of explore this thing a little bit. Oh, yeah, we're going to talk about that a little bit, too. And the good news is we do have a post. So, uh, yeah, let me play around. Oh, okay, here we go. Gotcha. All right, let me get into the BIOS and go from here. All right, so here's all the goodies. So we're dealing with the Z440 workstation. We already knew that. It's an E5-1650V3, and which is pretty decent. 16 gig of memory. We'll probably upgrade that eventually. Um, yeah, basic stuff. We've gotten into it. It works. I can give a, I can give a kudos or a thumbs up or whatever on the review that I got it from eBay because it did arrive in working condition. It showed up in really good shape. It was really clean and uh, even protected from the rain and the bubble wrap uh, from FedEx leaving it directly underneath what basically is a downspout for my roof in the rain. So yeah, we're, we're in great shape here so far. So in addition to the six core 12 thread Xeon processor and the 16 gig of memory and all that stuff that's hiding behind here, uh, four channel memory I believe it is, yeah. Uh, so I've got one 8-gig stick over here, one 8-gig stick over here. I think I might also show that later in a screenshot. The star of our show is going to be this K4200. This NVIDIA Quadro. Can we focus on that? There we go. Yep. And I'm going to take it out of there to show you guys just a little bit. So give me a sec. Now this beast of a video card does take a 6-pin external power. Uh, it does, I, I think if I remember seeing it right, it's about 100 to 110 watts of power. It has a whole 4 gig of video memory. It is the equivalent of something just less than probably an RX 6400. And we will test that later. But for right now, I just wanted to see if it worked. This, I will also be able to test in other systems because it's a single slot card, single slot full size, which means that some of those places or some of those builds that I have a hard time getting a card into, but I can use a full size as long as it's not too thick, I might be able to try to use in here. Um, I do have a little bit of a concern with the power, but that's okay because some of these power supplies might be able to get away with some kind of adapter and still not do too bad. It's going to pull less power, I believe, if I remember correctly. The uh, GTX 1660 definitely pull less power than RX 480 or 580. And so, uh, but yeah, the performance is going to be quite a bit less than those cards as well. It does need a little bit of cleaning up. I did notice during my testing, uh, I will spoil it for you guys, it ran at about 80 degrees, 80 between 80 and 82 degrees. Uh, so it probably does need a little bit of cleaning up, but for the time being, I just wanted to test the system and see how the system itself ran. So we often talk about getting, say, an old Optiplex and turning it into some kind of gaming computer for, you know, 100, 200 bucks or something. A lot of those, we can get something that's 4-core, four 4-thread, four 4-core, four 8-thread, and what have you, and put a, a video card in there. Usually it's some kind of small, low-power job that will get us enough where we can maybe play at 30 to 60 frames per second. This is a little bit different case. This has a 700 watt power supply in it. It's got a six core, 12 thread Xeon processor. It does have four channel memory. Uh, this has the potential to be a lot stronger CPU wise, 
we just might have to match it up with something video wise that would be worth you know worth the effort in this case this quadro video card is a little bit of a unique thing because the xeon processor doesn't have onboard graphics this computer still does need a video solution this is it uh, it's a, a basic for, for all intents and purposes this is a basic video out it does have some capabilities that but they're not really geared toward gaming and even though this video card does have external power that goes into it so it, it draws a little bit more power and you would think it would be more powerful it still only does have four gig of onboard memory uh, ddr5 i believe it is so it's not the most powerful video card that we could have for doing things like any kind of gaming and we, we kind of bear this out when we're taking a look at some of the games we tried out. Now, I only did try a handful here. I didn't want to go through a whole lot. Matter of fact, the main reason I am even testing this is because the box was wet and I wanted to get a baseline. I thought that that video card uh, being what it was, was a little bit of an oddity and I'd never tested one before. So, you know, the, it was time to go ahead and, and take this little puppy for a spin. With Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I did get some numbers that were in low to mid 20s. Uh, at 1080p low, we got about 28 frames per second, which is, for this game, playable. Uh, you, ideally, you want something that's at least 30 frames per second so that it's smooth. But with this game, it's not a high-paced, high you know, first-person shooter type game. It's more of an adventure, sort of a slower moving. And really, honestly, 28 frames per second did okay with this. Now, you can get a little bit smoother. I, I did test it at 900p on low and did get 34 which is console. I mean, you know, most consoles were only getting 30 frames per second, even, say, three, four, five years ago. So that does pretty well. I, I can't really complain. But this little Quadro video card, I mean, even though it, it is what it is, it just, so far, at the bare minimum, bare minimum type, you know, if we're going to do any kind of gaming. I did Borderlands 3, tested it at DX11 instead of DX12. DX12 is, uh, they have done a very good job of bringing DX12 up to the same speeds as DX11. However, I thought that on this card, we were probably better off testing with the older API. And so that's why I did that. Um, those, these results at 1080p low, we did get decent. I mean, we got almost 40 frames per second. It, it wasn't too bad. Uh, you can get 30 frames per second on medium and that worked out okay. So I wasn't, I wasn't upset about that. All the textures rendered, all the particle effects rendered, everything looked pretty good, and it doesn't didn't give any kind of issues or problems. It looked, uh, yeah, it looked playable. I'm sure that on 900p you'd probably do even a little bit better, and if you stepped it down to 720p, you'd probably, probably I imagine, get more close to 60 frames per second. Uh, this does not carry over well when I looked at Cyberpunk. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077 did. Uh, we're just going to say it didn't do very well. Uh, we couldn't even get close to a decent playable rate. In fact, we topped out at 20 frames per second at, at uh, 1080p low. Uh, so I thought maybe we'd use an upscaling like FSR or XESS. Can't use NVIDIA's upscaler because it's only for RTX cards. This is not an RTX card. Even though there are RTX or Quadro RTX cards, this is not one of them. This uh, is an older card and it's not, uh, yeah, it's just definitely not one of them. Uh, 10 frames per second up to about 20 frames per second was the range of what I was getting. Not very playable. Trying to use FSR, I did get better frame rates. Did not get any textures. A few particle effects like the uh, fire coming out of the trash can in the alleyway or a wire frame or two where a figure should have been or something should have been. Uh, but nothing else. The screen was blank. Uh, I could hear it, but nothing else rendered. It did very, very poorly. Uh, so I tried XESS. Intel solution for upscaling. It worked, except at about half the frame rate. So where I was thinking rendering at a lower resolution and showing at 1080p would help, this actually did just the opposite. It went backwards and I was getting right about half the frames. Uh, it was a uh, little, little discouraging, but we do know, again, this Quadro is not a gaming, uh, it's not a gaming card, not a gaming video card at all. So for my last set of tests with this round, we went ahead and picked CS2, which I've tested before with other cards. And this actually did pretty decent. I, I was getting around 60 frames per second, or thought at least I was getting somewhere in that area when I was testing. It took me a couple times to try to benchmark. Finally did get the benchmarks to work out okay, and sure enough, 
59 frames per second or 59.3 i think it was uh, very playable very smooth all the textures showed up uh, all the particle effects everything it looked really really good and it, i didn't cause it didn't cause me any kind of issues when i was playing there was no hitches no uh no backups no glitches or anything like that it was very very smooth so as far as esports titles and maybe some other titles this works but with something more demanding and the only one the only demanding triple a title i tried was cyberpunk but I'm sure with some of these like Red Dead or some newer games, I'm really, really sure this isn't going to work out too well. But that's not where we stop the testing here because this is just the base model. This Z440 with a 6-core and 12-thread Xeon, we can put some other stuff in here. We can put another video card and we can go ahead and still keep this under a decent budget. And I'm, I'm thinking even with a, a pretty decent video card, we can still keep this around 200 or 220 and then we can test it against the $200 pre-built that I had before on the channel or the $300 pre-built that I built from scratch and see how it goes against those two. I'm thinking this is going to do a little bit better because those pre-builts had 4-core, four 4-thread, four if I remember right. The Xeon had 4-core, 8-thread, and this one has 6-core, 12-thread. So if I, even if I can match it up with, say, a GTX 1660, um, I think we're still going to do all right. This PC does have a 700-watt power supply. So I can use something with more that requires more power, like an RX 480 or 580, and still do pretty well here, I think. So th I've got a few different options that we can try that are still inexpensive that I can put in this machine to try. Now, I am going to test it with a few others, like an RX 6400, even though that does cost more than 100 bucks. I think it's right, 100, 120 or something like that right now, still. Um, so I can test that, but I think my GTX 1660 and those RX 480s and 580s are going to do better than this would, uh, even though they are going to take power and the RX 6400 wouldn't. In any case, this gives us a good starting point. We know what we're dealing with to begin with, even though I wouldn't have tested this far if the box hadn't been wet. Uh, but I did kind of want to look at this quadro card. So if you, uh, yeah, if you learned anything, got anything out of it, found it entertaining, or just thought, hey, another video from Paul, that's cool. Um, yeah, go ahead and throw a like on it. If you don't mind, you know, throw a thumbs up, put the like. If you're not already subscribed, please do. I really would appreciate it. Trying to hit 1,400, then 1,500, and keep it going. We uh, would really love to get monet this channel monetized by the end of the year. I think that would be amazing. And uh, I can't do it without you guys. So I haven't gotten this far without you guys. So I really seriously do appreciate it. But if you don't do anything else, if you don't hit like or you don't subscribe or you don't check out any of the other socials or anything like that, please just do me one favor. And uh, that's be kind to each other. Just do something nice. Smile, wave, hold the door open, say good morning. Just, just any small gesture. Being kind costs you nothing. And it can make somebody's entire day. Heck, it might even make your day. You know, it might, might make your day just a little bit better, and that would be pretty cool, too. So that is all I have for this time. Uh, I will be testing other things in this PC, and I will also be testing this video card, this Quadro video card, this K4200, in other builds to see how it stacks up with other things I've already tested. I do not think that testing it within a 5800X or 12700K are going to change the the high end of what these video number or what the frame rates of these are um i don't think i'm going to get any better results let's just put it that way on these games but i might as well try it right uh the the cpu is just it's definitely not the bottleneck here anyway that is all i have for this time so until i get myself into something i got no business getting into i'll see you later